Welcome back guys. So in the last video, we have created uh, our rule uh, of business logic. Now we have set it up and let me save it up. And now I'm going to go back to my entity where we are going to apply that rule. And we're gonna see once we apply that rule, how it's going to uh, change the value wherever the condition uh, will match. So let's go inside the model. And in the model, you can see if I click on entities we have. So we have created, remember, so you have created the rule for, for product entity. So if you want to apply the rule, you need to go within that uh, entity. Uh, to to the application. Now, if you can see in, in here, let me just adjust the size, size of the, the screen, yeah. So you can see in the first uh, uh, screen, uh, we already have that rule applied and how I am uh, I know, because I can see there's a full name, uh, which is coming as uh, unknown. I'm also going to show you through the backend because that will help you to, let me just copy that. I need to update my MDS model as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do. Yeah, so I have some problem with my product dimension, which I've already created as part of my data warehouse schema. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to alter it. And for somehow it's not working. So I'll just replace it now. So now you can see everything is coming. So I'm just taking out all the metadata information because I don't need it at this stage, but we do need it for, for other purposes, which I'm gonna discuss later. Let me just remove it here. I think it's all good. Uh, let me see, do I need product subcategory old? Let me see if it is part of the, yeah, I think we do have, we have the old, uh, product subcategory attribute so that that's the the actual attribute not the metadata so all good let me just update my view yeah it's all good and now if i just select the top 200 let me just refresh my cache all good you can press Control shift and r to to uh, get rid of these uh ugly square break uh lines uh which are coming in red color because sometimes they are very confusing. So what I'm going to now show it to you, bear with me, I'm just going to show you the issue and then you'll see how we can fix it. We are not going to get till we have product size and let me just do two by product. Size, right so let's see if we can run it yeah so now you can see we have two values one is coming as unknown and the other one is coming as u and k no so some part of the unknown is missing now that's going to create trouble when i build uh, a dashboard or report on top of the, uh, that dimension on on table because it's going to actually split the record into two groups but theoretically they all should come under the unknown. So now I'm going to apply uh, the rule because if you remember, if we have that value, I'm going to replace it with unknown. And if any value which is coming as blank, we also going to replace that unknown because that is not available as part of our product record. All right. So by saying it, let me jump back to, to my portal. So on the first page, you can see the rule has already been applied and you can apply on page by page. So if you can see in the in the right bottom of your, of your page, you're gonna see that it has been paged. So the MDF doesn't show you all the records. Uh, so that, that's where the efficiency is. It just, you know, apply paging on, 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 the, on the grid where you are seeing your record, right? So if you want to see the next chunk of the record, just click on that play button and it's gonna actually take you to the next page. Now on this page, we can see we have all valid values, right? One thing what I can do, if I uh, want to uh, only get uh, the, the the one record, which I'm interested in, I can apply the filter. So let's see if I can get the product size and you can see the filter is going to be is equal to, and what I'm actually looking, let me grab it from my, database so i'm just looking this value so i just copied it 
and I'm going to paste it. So that's that's the value I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to apply in, in the filter. Uh, and once I apply it, you're going to see that we have all these uh, values coming in. Now, we only have some values in here. However, uh, uh, we do have 56 records. How would I know? If I go back into my database, you can see the table is showing we have 56 records. But in here, we are only seeing six records. And, and there is a reason why we are seeing six in here because by default on each page, uh, the MDS display 50 records. So you can see we already, we also have the paging still applied and we can go back to our first page to see the first 50 records, right? So you can see the first 50 records are coming in here. So, and on your left bottom, you can see a proper naming uh, or textual information, which really help to, uh, to understand uh, the number of records which we are uh, seeing on, on the current uh, page. And obviously we can do the navigation. So let me just click in here. And what I'm going to do, now I can see we have uh, U and K and O. I'm going to apply the rule to replace the value, which I've already uh, built as part of my business rule. So you can see we have the apply rule uh, uh, button in, in here. So if you click in here, you can apply to all. It's gonna actually apply all the record, but just for the sake of uh, testing, I'm just going to apply, uh, click on apply rule because what apply rules will do, it will only apply to the visible number. So whatever records are displayed on your page, it's gonna actually apply only on those records. However, if you are comfortable and if you wanna to apply to all the records, you can uh, use the apply to all. So if I just hover it, you're gonna see apply business rule to all the member in the entity, right? It really depends whatever requirements you are addressing. So let me just apply the rule on, on the current one. And you can see the records are gone. And there is a reason why the record has been gone because uh, we have applied the filter that uh, uh, only display those records where the value is U N K N O. Now we should have now uh, 51, uh, 50 records left, right? So you can see in here, and I'm going to show you another test quickly to just verify whether the rule has been applied. So you can see the count of the U N K N O has been dropped from 56 to 50, right? So that, that's how we apply the business rule on our entities. And that, that's something really powerful. Business doesn't need to uh, learn any SQL or, or uh, you know, any scripting language. They can use the front end and they can apply all sort of, you know, uh, all sort of business rule or logic on the, on the record. Now, just uh, for the sake of completion, what I'm going to do now, uh, because I already have this filter applied and I can see all my un, uh, K, U and K and O uh, uh, records on my screen. Uh, I will apply the, the business rule again on this. So you can see everything is gone and we don't have. So now that that's a real uh, result which we are looking because we shouldn't have any record. I have already applied it on my current screen and every record is now changed to a proper value unknown, not yet like uh, U and K and O, right? So, before I uh, turn off the filter, let me just show it to you from the backend. Now, if I run this query again one more time, you can see we have a very nice sweet product dimension where the, which has the, the clean product size uh, uh, column, and uh, which has all the size and we only have the unknown uh, 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 records where the product size is not available, right? So we can report now, I can just go and build a report and send it uh, or, uh, you know, share it with the business so they can, or X uh, is equal to, let me just show you. So these are the culprit records that I'm not interested. So I need business to fix them up. So you can see we have all these records that needs a fix. So that is all part of the, the data quality and governance activity that we normally perform on our data once we uh, once we get the data from our source system, right? So pretty simple, but very powerful technique to, to use the business rule in MDS and applied on our business, uh, 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 on our master data to, to clean the data and also, you know, to generate the, the, the incorrect information. So in that way, you can see that I know there's 
I'm not actually using it. I'm not twisting the attribute. It's more like I'm just putting an incorrect value. So later on, I can filter it and I can report back to the uh, report back this data to the business. So business can fix it and I can reload into my master data services, right? So there's a full-fledged data quality cycle which we can use master data services to, to, to support and you know implement uh, an efficient automation uh, to, to clean our data through these business rules and, and, the, and the MDS master data services, right? So hopefully you understand the, the main concept, how we can under, uh, apply the, the, the business rule uh, in, the, in the master data services. In upcoming video, we're gonna see more examples and we're gonna apply a bit more complicated rule. So you can understand how you can advance the logic. That's one way we also can create dynamic rules, which I'm gonna show you how we can create some rule which are dynamic and we can translate into, into the into the scripting but that obviously require uh, more effort at, at our end but uh, that that's gonna uh, work on, on on any kind of data as well so if you have any question please feel free to uh, ask or put your comments otherwise thanks for uh, watching uh, like the videos and i'm gonna see you in the next one